I'm Dr. Andy Thompson. This is COVID-19 update, March 17th, 2020. This is an important video. I had to get this out early. I have two reflections. Number one, we're all living through a significant piece of history. Number two, today I'm feeling a little bit scared when I look at the actual math. Our current trajectories as of March 17th, 2020 are as follows. We're all growing exponentially. Canada's right here day four after 150 cases. If we blow that up, you can see Canada is growing roughly the same rate as every other country. The percentage of deaths as of March 17, 2020, Canada remains low at 0.91%. Italy's the highest at 7.71%. Okay, we all like money, right? All right, so let's say I give you $100. And then let's say I was going to give you 25% interest every single day. How much money would you have in 30 days, 60 days, 90 days? Well, let's look. In 30 days, you'd have $64,000. It's a pretty good investment. In 60 days, you'd have $52 million. And in 90 days, you'd have $42 trillion. This is what is called exponential growth. It's just compound interest. Exponential growth is based on a logistic curve. It's actually the bottom part of this logistic curve. Now, with viral spreading, you cannot exponentially grow forever forever because you have a limited population so it eventually has to tail off in the bottom portion of the curve you have slow growth then you hit an inflection point where the growth rapidly accelerates there's a second inflection point where you see still rapid but slowing growth and finally a third inflection point where you have slow growth now, there's a formula for a logistic curve, and this is a bit complicated, but I want to just show two things. This is the change in the number of cases each day, and it is based on the average number of people someone who is infected with is exposed to each day. That's E. And then P, the probability of each of those exposures becoming an infection, and then times the number of people actually infected at that time. So E is the average number of people someone who is infected is exposed to each day. How do we limit that? Well, some of the things we're doing, social distancing, staying two meters apart for no more than 10 to 15 minutes, social isolation, restricting travel, restricting gatherings. P is the probability of each exposure becoming an infection. What affects that? Higher viral loads, good hand washing, hand sanitizing, wash often, wash well. And for healthcare workers, wearing face masks and other protective equipment. So this is our curve. Now what we look at on this curve is something called the growth factor. And this is basically your rate of return, okay, in interest, okay? When you have a growth factor of greater than one, your money or your viral, load, your viral uh, transmission is growing very quickly. When you have a growth factor equal to one, it's at this inflection point. And at this point in time, if you know the number of people affected, roughly it'll be double in total. And then as you slow down, the growth factor becomes less than one. Here's the growth factors for COVID-19 as of March 17th, 2020. For Canada, you can see our growth factor was 0 0.86 on day three, and now we're at 1.13. You can see all of the other growth factors. The average growth factors for each country. You can see every single growth factor other than Canada, but we're still early, is above one. On the latest growth factors, Canada is 1.13, USA 1.05, England's actually lower at 0 0.61. Now that depends if you're reporting all of the cases though. France, Germany, Spain, and then Italy. Italy seems to have tailed off a little bit and their growth factors are all really right around one now. Where's Canada right now on this curve? We're right here. We're just starting to rapidly accelerate our growth. So what do we need to do? We need to reduce exposures and the probability someone will get the virus if they are exposed. We need to socially distance and socially isolate. We need to restrict travel, restrict gatherings. You need to wash your hands. And we need to pray our medical system is adequate to keep the rate of death low. So today I'm scared. This is really frightening. If you think all of this social isolation is too drastic, the math does not lie. We were still too slow. Let's say we only have three cases in my city in London and Ontario. If we were to grow at the same pace as Italy, we'll have 12,000 in 30 days, 12,000. Canada is just starting to inflect and hit the rapid rate of growth. We have to socially distance and isolate. 
The question is, are we too late? This morning, a state of emergency was issued for Ontario. I think the government knows these numbers and can see this growth. Folks, we're going to be here for a while. This is not going to be short-lived. Our real issue is, are we going to overwhelm the healthcare system? And without proper resources, will we have to choose who gets a ventilator and who doesn't? I don't think the large majority of people realize just how serious this could be. We have to do our best to limit local community spread. Remember, stay home, stay safe, save lives.